Good morning, everyone. Good morning. We welcome you to our worship service today as we gather to celebrate the 20th Sunday in the season of Pentecost. I did change the pews up uh, after the funeral last night. It's been about six weeks since we had that shift, so it's back to normal. Okay? But now after six weeks, it probably doesn't feel like normal anymore. <laughs> so um, we'll keep doing that as uh, the season dictates. Our opening hymn, for those who are watching at home, is number 345, In the Cross of Christ I Glory, number 345. that's watching at home. This is page 15 in the front of the hymnal, the common service. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father and asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, Grant us forgiveness. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful, and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil, and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given his only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, in your bountiful goodness, 
Keep us safe from every evil of body and soul. Make us ready with cheerful hearts to do whatever pleases you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated for our Old Testament lesson. The Old Testament is from 1 Chronicles chapter 29, verses 1 through 2, and then 10 through 18. King David said this to the whole assembly. My son Solomon, the one God has chosen, is young and inexperienced. The work is great because this citadel is not for a man. It is for the Lord God. According to all my strength, I have provided these things for the house of my God. Gold for the gold I use, silver for the silver, bronze for the bronze, iron for the iron, wood for the wooden, onyx stones and settings, antimony stones of many different colors, every kind of precious stone, and alabaster in abundance. David blessed the Lord in the presence of the entire assembly. He said, Blessed are you, Lord, the God of Israel, our Father, from eternity to eternity. To you, O Lord, belong greatness, power, glory, victory, and majesty, because everything in the heavens and on earth belongs to you. You, Lord, are exalted as head above everything. The kingdom belongs to you. Riches and honor come from you. You are ruling over everything. In your hand are power and strength. It is in your power to make anyone great and strong. Now, our God, we are thanking you and praising your glorious name. Who am I? Who are my people? <clears throat> that we are able to offer willingly like this. For everything comes from you. What we have given to you came from your hand. We are aliens and temporary residents before you, as were all our children. Our days on the earth are like a shadow, and there is no hope of staying. Lord our God, all this abundance, which we have provided for building a house for you, for your holy name, is from your hand. This abundance belongs to you. I know, my God, that you test the heart, and you take pleasure in uprightness. In the uprightness of my heart, I have freely offered all these things. Now with joy I see your people who are present here to bring the offering freely to you. Lord, the God of our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, preserve forever this purpose and way of thinking in the heart of your people. Direct their heart to you. Here ends our Old Testament lesson. We'll continue now with the responsive reading of Psalm 51a. For those of you at home, page 86 in the front of the hymnal. Psalm 51a. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Have mercy on me, O God, to Wash away all my iniquity, and my sin. for I know my transgressions, and my sin is always before me. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. <clears throat> Against you, you only have I sinned. And I will in your sight. Surely I was sinful at birth. Sinful from the time my mother conceived me. Hide your face from my sins. And I will hide it with you. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. And grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is 
is now and will be forever. Amen. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Our epistle lesson is recorded in Romans chapter 6, verses 15 through 23. What then? Should we continue to sin because we are not under the law but under grace? Absolutely not. Do you not know that when you offer yourselves to obey someone as slaves, you are slaves of the one you are obeying? whether slaves of sin, resulting in death, or slaves of obedience, resulting in righteousness. Thanks be to God that although you used to be slaves of sin, you became obedient from the heart to the pattern of the teaching into which you were placed. After you were set free from sin, you became slaves of righteousness. I am speaking in a human way because of the weakness of your flesh. Indeed, just as you offered your members as slaves to impurity and lawlessness, resulting in more lawlessness, so now offer your members in the same way as slaves to righteousness, resulting in sanctification. For when you were slaves of sin, you were free from righteousness. So what kind of fruit did you have then? They were things of which you are now ashamed. Yes, the final result of those things is death. But now, since you were set free from sin and have become slaves to God, you have your fruit resulting in sanctification. And the final result is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the undeserved gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Here ends our epistle lesson. We'll continue now with the seasonal response. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful people and kindle in us the fire of your love. Hallelujah. Gospel is recorded in Luke chapter 17, verses 1 through 10. Jesus said to his disciples, Temptations to sin are sure to come, but woe to the one through whom they come. It would be better for that person if a millstone would be hung around his neck and he would be thrown into the sea than for him to cause one of these little ones to sin. Watch yourselves. If your brother sins, rebuke him. If he repents, forgive him. Even if he sins against you seven times in one day, and seven times returns to you and says, I repent, forgive him. The apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith. The Lord said, if you had faith like a mustard seed, you could tell this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Which one of you who has a servant plowing or taking care of sheep will say to him when he comes in from the field, come in at once and recline at the table? Won't the master tell him instead, <clears throat> prepare my supper, and after you are properly dressed, serve me while I eat and drink. After that, you may eat and drink. He does not thank the servant because he did what he was commanded to do, does he? So also you, when you have done all that you were commanded, say, we are unworthy servants. We have only done what we were supposed to do. Here ends our gospel lesson.
We'll join in the Apostles' Creed. It's on page 19 in the hymnal. It's the confession of our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We'll continue with our next hymn. You may be seated. It's hymn number 339. Today your mercy calls us. And John, don't start just yet. I'm going to whisper something to him. stand. The Word of God for our meditation this morning is from Luke chapter 17, the verses right after our gospel lesson for today, verses 11 through 17. Now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into a village, Ten men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, Go show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? <clears throat> Was no one found to return and give glory to God except this foreigner? And then he said to him, rise and go. Your faith has made you well. These are God's words for our meditation this morning. Dear Christian friends, these uh, words from Luke chapter 17, 11 through 17. These are the traditional 
Thanksgiving lesson. And so many of you have heard these year after year after year about giving thanks to God. Well, today I'm going to take a little bit of a different look at them. Not a whole lot, but we're going to look at it in a way in which we're going to see God's power that comes to us and the power of faith. And in that power of faith, we're going to see how it helps in real problems with a real solution, and it leads to giving glory to God. These ten men were in a continual condition of quarantine. They could be with each other because they were all infected with the very same disease, but they could not be with anyone else. In fact, when people would come close to them, they were to cry out, unclean, unclean, stay away. You can't get close to us because we don't want to share any of our germs with you. So it's like, oh, that's kind of interesting for our modern world and take on things of realizing there really is nothing new under the sun. This was something that had been practiced long, long ago throughout the history of the Jewish people. And we, as we go through a pandemic, we realize that we also want to make sure that we can not only keep ourselves safe, but do all that we can to keep others safe. So these 10 men had banded together a group with the, all the very same problem. There was no cure, and there was no one that really could help them. They were separated from family, from friends, and the only thing that drew all of them together was the fact that they were all in the same rotten, stinking boat. They had leprosy. As Jesus travels on his ministry, he goes to all the areas in the entire land. And in this trip, he's on his way to Jerusalem, certainly the focus of much of his ministry, but he's traveling along the border between Samaria and Galilee. On the one hand, you have Samaria, the Samaritans, the non-Jewish, and Galilee, where the Jewish people are. And there was constant tension between the two different groups. The Jews certainly thought that they were better than the Samaritans, and the Samaritans thought we should be able to be just as good as the Jews. We're all people after all. But the Jews looked down on the Samaritans. Those racial tensions and uh, stereotyping, again, present from way, way, way back. Doesn't matter the color of the skin, but someone is different maybe in a way that isn't really noticeable, and yet it made a difference that people wanted to avoid them. And we've heard about the priests and the teachers of the law and the Pharisees. They did all that they could to avoid not just people of non-Jewish background, the Samaritans, but they also did all that they could do to avoid sinners. Well, these 10 men are in an area where Jesus might not normally be considered to go because his disciples and others might have thought, if you share your message with these other people, that certainly can't be a good thing. But when Jesus had an opportunity, he took advantage of that opportunity to show the power of faith the real power of faith. These men had a real problem. They had lived with it, possibly for years and years. And they would continue to live with it 
until they died. And then a glimmer of hope, a flash of light came into their eyes. Jesus, a man that they certainly had heard about, even though they were separate from getting close to other people, the good news of salvation was out there in the world that Jesus was someone who had power. And Jesus was someone who was willing to help all people. Would he help those in quarantine, those who were separated, those who even had a disease? Would they help him? Well, they called out in a loud voice, stood at a distance. They knew where they were supposed to be. And they followed all of the rules, but they certainly did want to get his attention. A loud voice. And their cry was very simple. Jesus, Master, have pity on us. Now, Jesus could have certainly taken the simple way out of expressing his sorrow and giving them his condolences and reassuring them that eternal life was something that would be waiting for them and their healing would take place in heaven rather than on earth. But Jesus immediately got to the real problem with a real solution. And his solution was unexpected, uh, simple, totally powerful. It was something that they could not immediately recognize what a great thing it was that he was doing for them because he told them a simple command. Go show yourselves to the priests. For a person who had leprosy to ever get out of quarantine, they had to do exactly that. They had to go visit the priests. And the priests were in sort of that medical position of taking a look and figuring out, does this individual still have the disease of leprosy or not? And then Jewish people had to do that for many other uh, skin diseases and infections as well. But leprosy, that was the hard one to get rid of because there wasn't an earthly cure. And so these men, when they heard the command, go show yourselves to the priest, I would certainly imagine that they are thinking to themselves, this can't end well. We're lepers. No one's ever been healed of leprosy. How is this going to work? But when they were on their way, they saw the results of the power of faith. They did go. They trusted in Jesus' words. They had faith that Jesus, the master, could and would and did have pity on them in a very special way. And as they went, they realized they were cleansed. And for leprosy, it was something that was visibly apparent that they were better, that they could now get out of quarantine, get back to family and friends, get back to society, get back to worship, get back to the tabernacles, the synagogues, the places where they could worship. And as they went, you can imagine that change that takes place from walking to Jerusalem or to the clo closest area where there was a priest to almost running. This is so good. This is so great. Jesus told us to do this, and there's nothing that's going to get in our way. For nine of them. And I, you certainly can't fault them for doing that. They were rejoicing of the great thing that had taken place in their lives, all 10 of them. 
But there was one who came back and gave glory to Jesus, gave glory to God. He was very emphatic in that, that he wanted to praise God in a loud voice, and he threw himself at Jesus' feet, and he gave glory to God. And Jesus and gave thanks and glory to God. And Jesus asked the question. The cleansing was for all ten, but only one came back. He came back to glorify the one who had saved him. When we think of the very first command, you shall have no other gods. The focus of that commandment in Martin Luther's What Does This Mean? We should fear, love, and trust in God above all things. We should give all glory to God in every aspect of our lives, whether that is thanking Him and praising Him as the second commandment brings out, calling upon Him in time of trouble, pray, praise, and give thanks. We have examples of all of those things taking place there, as well as a fulfillment to the first, the second, and you can imagine them getting back into their lives to work on the third, families, the rest of the commandments all begin to fall into line too. They're not made perfect. They're cleansed. They're still sinful, but they've seen their Savior. And their faith has certainly been strengthened, and their message that they will share with many others will also be instrumental in leading other people to faith in Jesus Christ, giving glory to God. We can't see into the hearts and to the actual actions of the other nine people as they are going to find a priest to be able to be declared cleansed. But the one that we do know very clearly did exactly all of the things that Jesus expected him to do. In our readings for today, especially from the Romans reading, we heard about the actions of the sinful nature only lead in one direction, but the actions of those who are slaves to righteousness, servants of the one true God, have actions that lead in a totally different direction. They lead to ways that show that the sanctification in their lives is real, and that their faith is active and living, and that they are doing all that they can to share that good message of salvation. We are a month away from Thanksgiving and the celebration then, and I'll, I'll use a different text at that time, but I certainly thought that at this time, as we've been in quarantine at times for so long, and isolated, and even now, separated by pews, Find the green pew. Stay away from the red pew. Don't get too close for too long. God's got a solution. The final one will be in heaven. He'll have people working, giving them that knowledge to be able to find the temporary one. And yet as we go through this life, we know that God also has the permanent one for us right here and now through the message of salvation. And we hold on to that. And we trust that Jesus will do everything that is necessary for our salvation. And we confess in the Apostles' Creed, he did it. Completely. And he wants us to believe it. To trust it. To have the power of faith. And give glory to God in our entire lives and everything that we do. We've got some time now to maybe sit back and just reflect on how God works in our lives still today and think about all the areas in which God blesses us. We've got that time. Use it well. Use it to give God glory. Amen. Please stand. The peace of God that passes all understanding keeps your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen.
Oh, Lord God, Heavenly Father, we praise and glorify you for the unsurpassed gift of your Son, Jesus Christ. We confess that we are unworthy sinners who have transgressed your holy will and word. We repent of our evil and pray for that strong faith that trusts utterly and completely in the righteousness of Christ Jesus for our forgiveness. Open our hearts for the mighty power of your word. Teach us to depend on your holy sacrament for spiritual strength. Grant that our minds be, may be renewed in righteousness, that our consciences may be stirred to church, choose the good, and that every thought, word, and deed may be brought into captivity in Christ. Give to your church pastors and teachers who have the faithfulness and courage of true prophets, that your people may be built up in the faith, abound in good works, rejoice in your love, and finally enter your heavenly kingdom. We also pray for our beloved country. Give us citizens who perceive that the standard of all that is right is not personal advancement or private favor, it's not public opinion or party platform, but it's your holy will. Lavish your grace on all families that each home may by its Christian love and character be for our children a foretaste of the joy and blessedness of our heavenly home. For all who are in any sickness, pain, anguish, or suffering, for all who are in any danger of body or soul, we also pray. Teach them to turn to you and wait on you for mercy. Grant them hope and a joyous deliverance from all their trials, and let them walk in your light all their days. Today we also offer special prayers we offer a prayer on behalf of the family of Myron Henderson. Myron passed away last Sunday, and uh, his funeral was here yesterday at the church. We offer a prayer of thanksgiving that Mitchell McNally was able to return home. He'll continue his process of recovery, but it'll be at home instead of in the hospital in quarantine. We also offer a prayer for our long time organist who's still doing great but she was in the hospital this past week uh, has been able to come home we'll have some more tests on tuesday and god willing possibly by the end of the month uh, she'll be back uh, helping out in our worship services but we'll talk and work with her to figure that all out and we pray for her continued recovery O oh Lord God, giver of health, safety, strength, we praise you for having been with your servant Mitchell McNally during the recovery time from his injury. He has been able to return home, and we give you thanks that you have taken care of him and washed over him during that entire almost two-month time period. May he daily remember your great goodness so that he can serve you with a life that reflects genuine thankfulness for all of your blessings through Jesus Christ, our Lord. We also come to you today on behalf of Shirley Kapusman. Lord God, you are the great physician of body and soul. You chasten and you heal. We pray that you would look with mercy on your servant in her time of weakness. If it is your will, continue to spare her life and restore her strength. You gave your son to bear our infirmities and sicknesses. Deal compassionately with your servant 
and bless all the medical needs employed on her behalf with your healing power. We commit her to your gracious mercy and protection, for you are a faithful and merciful God. Dear Heavenly Father, we also come to you today on behalf of the Henderson family. Myron has joined you to be with you forever in heaven. God, you made those decisions about life and death. You've had mercy on your servant during, throughout all the 95 years of his life, the 70 years of his marriage with his family. Now his departure has taken place. Comfort his family with faith's assurance that you have always been with him and that he, you will also be with his family. Do not let them be overcome by seer, fear, sorrow, and spat, sadness. Encourage all of it out encourage all of his loved ones with the sure hope of the glory that you prepared for your believers in heaven. Into your hands we have committed him, O Lord, our Redeemer, who has also taught us to pray in the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lord God, you've given us your holy scriptures for our learning. May we so hear, read, learn, and take them to heart, that being strengthened and comforted by your holy word, we may cling to the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Our closing hymn, and you may be seated, is hymn 349, the last two verses, verses 4 and 5, Jesus, Priceless Treasure. Today in worship 
as you leave today, we have a lot of offering baskets in the back. One for our regular offering, one for our fourth Sunday of the month offering, which is the Apache Mission. There are baskets that are also there on behalf of Mitchell McNally, and there is another basket on behalf of the Myron Henderson family. Thank you all for coming. Look forward to seeing you again soon. Also, I'd like to let everybody know we have a Bible study from 10 o'clock to 1045. Um, if you are comfortable and able to stay, please do so. We'd love to have you.